So if you've been around for a while, you've heard me say this, I think Strongman is by far the, 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 maybe the best, and I hesitate to use the word best ever, but I think Strongman may be the best concept for strength training for martial artists. Now I'm gonna lump uh, Highland Games in with this, and uh, to a great degree, we could even look back at maybe, uh, you know, uh, Olympic lifting and via that CrossFit, you know, you can string all these together. But the reason that I'm saying this and the reason that I believe so strongly in this is that if you fancy yourself a very strong person, but also somebody who wants to be able to do things, not somebody who can just waddle up to a squat rack and squat a thousand pounds, then the sport of strongman and the accompanying necessary training to be good at strongman leaves you so incredibly well prepared to execute your strength on the move, doing tasks. It, it is a fantastic, fantastic concept. Now, uh, yeah, okay, generally speaking, uh, a lot of strongmen neglect uh, bench press, so they don't have a lot of bench press strength, but that is getting more and more rare. A lot of these guys, as strongman grows in popularity, a lot of these guys are coming in from powerlifting and just bro lifting and whatnot, and so they already value the bench. But what we're looking at in the concept of strongman is that it's strongman is almost never about can you lift this big thing once. It's usually about can you lift this relatively big thing, big thing, not not necessarily a world record weight, but can you lift this very big thing and do something with it. Can you throw this heavy weight over a bar? Can you pick up this object and carry it somewhere? Can you grab this rope and pull uh, and move an object? Or can you run with an object in tow? Um, you know, how many times can you pick something up off of the ground, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is such a valuable, valuable way of training for a martial artist. And uh, in, in many ways, even though Strongman came well before CrossFit, in many ways you can look at uh, Strongman as kind of CrossFit for strong people. And, and in that way, uh, it, it is achieving many of the same uh, goals that, strong, uh, that, that CrossFit's looking for, maybe with less of an emphasis on the endurance side of things. And you know, as a martial artist, you do, you do need uh, stamina and endurance. Those are important things. Um, but conversely, we see when a lot of times these uh, you know strongmen take on some of these endurance challenges, they do just fine because they are so much stronger than uh, the actual load being lifted. Uh, so it's it, it's perfectly fine, and you know, you can draw a big link between those two worlds. Uh, it, in many ways, it's kind of what Brian Alsher does. Um, which is actually re really, really cool and really, really useful. Uh, you know, and again, like I said, we can we can bring Highland Games into that. And Highland Games uh, largely seems to focus on throwing events. It has some, you know, like you know, load and carry events and stuff too. But uh, but the the heavy throwing is again, that's another very, very valuable thing. Um, you know, a, a punch being very much more like a throw than a press. Being able to throw and launch that energy in a heavy object across a field is a very, very valuable skill to have. And because it is not going to be the exact same pattern as a punch, it won't ruin your punch like doing, you know, loaded functional training would. And, uh, yet it is still gonna allow you to express those joint angles um, by building up a lot of velocity in a short amount of time and launching a very heavy thing. It should make you a much, much more dangerous puncher. And so when we look at these old school you know, methods uh, of training, you know, they are more functional than, than anything that people call functional training nowadays. And, Okay, yeah, Strongman and Highland Games, of all the, uh, the formal strength sports that we have, do have the highest injury rates, but keep in mind, it's between seven and nine per thousand training hours. So, 
seven to nine injuries per thousand training hours is tiny. That is so far below, that is a, you know, a small percent of a percent. It is a tiny, tiny thing. It, injury is not something you need to worry about so much there. And again, uh, um, you can look at maybe a lot of that injury is coming from the fact that um, in these competitions, oftentimes the implements used in competition is not the same as the implements used in training. Therefore, it's going to have new joint angles, which are still asking to overload and thus uh, hitting unprepped uh, tissues with uh, forces that they're not yet ready to handle and thus creating some injury. And again, that is such a tiny, tiny percent. And it's not something that you should have to worry too much about. So uh, these are very, very, very uh, functional modalities of training that will get you very strong and, uh, and, and will at least get you some stamina and endurance, if not, you know, uh, CrossFit or track and field levels of it, it will definitely give you some uh, some modicum of, of endurance, and those are some really, really, really fantastic things. Now, now I, I know that I, I, I kind of jokingly said before that you know functional training isn't valuable for martial arts, and and I stand by that. What we term functional training in the modern world is a lot of stuff where people are doing very lightly loaded uh, movements that are supposed to be mimicking the precise same joint angles and movement patterns that they're using in their sport. Um, and one of the things that we know that there have been multiple studies done on this, that when you load a movement, you uh, over a certain threshold, it's a, it seems to be about a 20% threshold on, on based on at least one study that I've seen, which I've quoted in my blogs and stuff before, uh, is when you load a movement over a certain threshold, you your body adopts a completely different nerve pattern to fire the fibers. You know, and so we already know that if, if it changes your joint angles and it changes the, 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 the nerve firing pattern, then you are essentially working a different movement. Now, you know, is there gonna be carryover from movement to movement? Yeah, of course there's gonna be carryover from movement to movement. But the thing is that if you spend all this time on loaded training and then you go and do your regular training, you're also risking maybe some overuse injuries. And again, you know, injuries are so, so low and uncommon, we, we can't really use that as a cop-out. But overuse can still slow down training just because you kind of have some nagging you know, aches and pains, even if you're not injured, that's gonna make your training less useful. So this concept of functional training is, is, is completely off the mark. It just doesn't do what it's supposed to do. And if you would just adopt a more generalized strength and conditioning program for your sport and then go practice your sport, you know, as specifically as is, uh, as is necessary for us, you know, sparring, drilling, etc., then you do fine. You don't need to stand on a Swiss ball and uh, you know yank a band that is anchored at a 37.4 degree angle from the ceiling. At, you know that kind of stuff is just it's asinine and it is a, a waste of time. So you know it doesn't get much more functional than than strongman and Highland Games type ideas. And again, right as we've gone through this, this is probably the last video in the series. Uh, but as we've gone through these, we've talked about bodybuilding, body weight training, CrossFit, powerlifting, uh, you know, Olympic lifting, and now these older forms, uh, you know, strongman and, uh, and and Highland Games. What we're now seeing then is, uh, what do they all share, right? They all share squats, they all share hip hinges, they all share pressing movements, whether horizontal or overhead or both. Um, they all have some single joint assistance type work. They all have compound work. They all run a range from lightweight to heavyweight, you know, working reps for endurance and work capacity versus uh, also working maximal strength. These are all generalized patterns. And if you look at some of the other uh, weight training correlation videos that I've done previously, you'll see that 
it's not really about picking the one thing that's going to be the perfect thing to uh, supplement your martial arts. It is understanding at the core, at the root, what are we trying to achieve with this? Well, we're trying to gain strength and conditioning that will help push our martial arts to the next level. And in this way, we don't need to do a lot of crazy, fancy stuff. And, you know, just doing standard strength training with some single joint hypertrophy endurance work, capacity type work, and doing some maximal work and doing some, uh, you know, uh, loaded carries and throws and things like that, you can build yourself a very, very strong martial arts, you know, generalized strength and conditioning program that will help you immensely and provided you can periodize that with your actual skill training uh, so that you're not burning yourself out, then you will do fine. This is not about picking the best thing. This is about picking something that you can do, that you can do sustainably, that you can do well for years and years and years to come. And if you need to change gears and do something else, you can do that too. So uh, hopefully this has been helpful for you guys. And uh, you know, let me know in the comments below if you ever you know, want me to, to discuss other things like this. Um, you know, doing a, a, a small limited series on you know, correlating other things to martial arts. So uh, with that, I will talk to you guys later. Good journey. Thanks for watching. Like and subscribe. In the links down below, you can find our social media and I encourage you to follow us there. Take a look at our blog where we have articles that go into depth that we just can't do in our video productions. And on top of that, go to our Amazon store and pick out a shirt that you like and every little bit helps. If you're ever in the Phoenix area, look us up. Come in for a class, come in for open mat, whatever. Love to see you down here. You can find all our contact info on the website. Talk to you guys in the next one. Good journey.